for a walk. That's great. And then we go back. We're still walking back, which is not as good. Welcome back to Arcade. I am Super Tommy. And in this video, we're going to look at adding Penguin character to our side scrolling platformer game here in Phaser 3.50. In the last video, we set up our Penguin Atlas, which is a combination of individual sprites into one texture for performance. And we added our tile map using a tile set from Kenny and using the uh, tiled map editor. So go back to that video if you want to see how we did that. So we left off here. We have our tile map loading. And so now what we're going to do is use Matter.js to create a collision box for all our various tiles. So when our character um, is created, it'll walk on the floors and run into walls and things like that. So we'll start here. Let's just delete this last test thing that we did. We have a ground. We have these ice cubes here. So what we're going to want to do is first switch to use Matter. In our main.ts file, this defaults to Arcade. So let's switch to matter. Now we're going to change this to matter. And we don't need to set gravity. The default gravity should be fine. We're going to do debug though so that we can see an outline of the various um, objects, objects and their collision boxes. Okay, so now let's actually go back to tiled over here. Let's make myself smaller. And I'll be on the left when I'm in tiled here. So this is our tile set that we made in part one. Now let's go into our tile set. We'll click on that wrench there to edit. What we need to do is, now select all of these, we're gonna add a property. We need to add a custom property called collides, uh, which is down here, well, over here to the left. So select all your tiles, then click this plus down here, add a property, we're gonna call it collides. It's gonna be a bool, which is Boolean, true or false. Click OK, defaults to false, good. So we're gonna make, let's say, at least these guys, uh, these guys, these guys, um, grounds, let's just say. We can check collides to be true. So let's unselect here, we click this guy, true, this guy, not true, right? This is just snow, this igloo heating. So everything that we selected, these ice cubes, or ice tiles, are true. Now let's uh, save that sure to export every time you save changes in tiled. Did that. Let's come back here. Here's in our game. So now what we need to do, this is um, where you sort of need to know the, let me move over, know the API in phaser and matter to get the collisions to work. So now we have this tile layer that we created, our ground layer, and we're going to uh, turn on the physics for this layer. So const ground, do that. Now we do ground dot set collision by property. So set collision by property. So now we had our property collides. So we're going to give it an object, which is collides true. So for all the properties that have collides true, we're going to make their collides true in phaser, meaning those um, tiles will be attached a Matter.js physics body. So there's that. Okay. Now, we do that, but you're going to see nothing happens here. And what we need is one more thing. We need to do this dot matter, not make, matter dot world convert tile map layer, and we pass in the layer which is ground. And boom, you see these are static bodies. These are the blue outline that wasn't there before, right? Just to, if you missed it, you can also rewind or I can just do this. There's no blue outline. Uh, we add this convert tile map layer and then poof, there's blue outlines, meaning these are now physics bodies. And by default here, we're just, they're made static, which is probably what you want uh, when you make um, platforms in a in, in, in tiled or you know just ground they're not going to move they're going to stay static where they are so these are static bodies so we have a world with walls 
you know, like these games right here. Now we need a character to actually walk around in it. So let's make a user penguin. We're gonna do this dot matter matter dot add add dot sprite. So we're gonna add a sprite. Now um, for now let's just pick a spot because it doesn't actually matter right now. Uh, let's say I don't know. Let's say zero. Actually, let's do go back up. Yeah, let's go back down here. Const width height. Oops. This dot scale like we did in the first video just to get the width and the height here. And then we're gonna just set them set this penguin to the center of the screen. It may run into one of these bricks, but we'll see what happens. Penguin. Okay. Boom. And so there's a penguin. It landed on a uh, ice brick here, but it won't move because we didn't we didn't add movement yet. We will do that. So here we will do that. But uh, first, um, let's just uh, give it some different animations since he looks surprised here. So here's our penguin um, to start. So now let's make some animations for our penguin. Let's just make a new method here in our class. So we're using TypeScript. Uh, there's been no you know, typing yet so far, but we'll get to it. I'm sure you'll see it. Uh, but we're making a class method here and we're gonna use private because uh, no one else should use this method. So we're using private. So just say create penguin animations. And what we're gonna do is uh, use the frames that we that are in this atlas over here these frames which define which frame in these pictures we'll just do walk first which is defined here by uh, walk 01 walk 02 walk 03 and walk 04 so there's four frames that make up the walk animation so this dot add nope, this dot anims dot create and we give it a key and let's see what does this key mean again so the docs have um, improved a lot in the phase of 3.50 which is fantastic so kudos to those guys who's worked on it and improved the documentation here um, so let's see Come on, give me some more data on this key I'm sure I've seen it. Of course, now, now that I um, mention it, uh, VS Code is giving me an issue, I think. But nonetheless, key, we're going to call this um, player walk. And then we do frame rate. Let's just say 10 frames. We're going to give it an array of frames, but for now, placeholder and repeat because it's walking. We're gonna want it to loop. Now, okay, it's, it's, it's more room for code here. Okay, so the, the core thing here, what we've done here is we made a animation named player walk. It's got a frame rate of 10 and it's gonna repeat or loop forever. <clears throat> and now the key part here is giving it the four frames that we just looked at that make up this animation. Now we could specify four objects here, right? So in this case, key would be penguin and then um, frame would be you know like whatever this thing here penguin walk 0201 we got to do this four times but there's an easier way because the built-in phaser animation manager has a generate frame names over here and what this is going to do is so is uh, generate those objects, that array of objects that I was briefly typing out more um, easily for you. So this would be penguin. And then the config here is a start, which is gonna be one. And we're doing one because these frames count from walk 01, one, two, four. So there's four frames. So we're gonna count from one to four, start and is four. That's just for easier reading for you guys. Let's just put it up here. 
So start at one, go to four. Uh, there's a prefix, and that prefix is going to be here. Basically, this whole thing up to let's say that number. Now we're going to just take the zero as well for now. So that's our prefix. So what this thing is going to do is create a, sh a an array of those frame objects where the frame key is going to be penguin zero one, penguin zero two, up to four. Um, and generate that data for us. We also need the suffix here because it's .png, right? You can see here it's the number and then .png. So what this thing does is it'll combine this part prefix, this part suffix, with the start and end numbers, start to end numbers uh, here, one, two, four. So that's walk. So let's come up here in create and do this dot create penguin animations. Great. And now, let's just do dot play on our penguin. And do player walk. And you see our penguin's walking. Or at least it's gonna keep playing this walk animation. So that's good. So this all worked out, fantastic. Now let's give them an idle uh, animation. So key, we're gonna call this player idle. It's very similar to what we just did. Frame rate really doesn't matter, so we're gonna ignore it actually. Frames is what we want, and the repeat also doesn't matter for idle in this case because we don't really have an idle animation. Um, we're just gonna use, I think, walk01. Let's see. Just give it a look, a look see, which looks like an idle animation, right? I guess any of these could be. I do think maybe this one, so I think that's walk01. So basically, now you can see what this is basically doing. It's a uh, frame. It's going to be uh, penguin walk01. Let's just copy this. 1.png. And then let's just do key first. This is the key of the texture we're loading, which is up here, penguin, with the atlas that we're loading. Uh, oops. All right, so that's our player idle. So let's actually start our sprite here with player idle. Boom. All right. So now let's actually add some animation to this, or not, rather add some movement to this keyboard. I got the animations. Add some movement with the keyboard. Let's come up here to the top of the game scene class here in the class fields area. I'm gonna do cursors, cursors. And this is going to be phaser dot, I think that could types, dot input, dot keyboard, dot cursor key. So the cursor keys is a um, object with the arrow keys and the space, right? Yep, and shift. Just a convenient way of getting uh, commonly used um, movement keys. So let's do that, that's good. Let's add an init here. Init is one of the, I think, four or three callbacks I this init preload create and I think update. The phaser will call on any scene that has these methods. So init gets called before preload, um, so there's init preload and then create. But we can get our cursor keys in init and it gets called every time. So oftentimes you put stuff into a constructor thinking it's the initialization. It's not really true. If you rerun the game scene, constructor does not get called again, but init will. So you should do your init in the init uh, function uh, method. So this dot cursors, this dot input dot input dot keyboard dot create cursor keys. And now we will have cursor keys. This is a TypeScript telling us because we didn't do this in the constructor, it can't know for sure that this will not be undefined, and that is true. But the way phaser three works we can roughly trust that this will be undefined. That's what this exclamation mark does. Okay, so we got that. Now, speaking of updates, let's add an update method. This would be called by phaser automatically each frame, each update tick, so that we can uh, perform uh, things that need updates over time. And so movement will go in here because we need to make sh check if you're pressing on, on, on key buttons or not. 
So let's just real quickly do a walk left and right. So if this dot cursors dot left is down, so if we're pressing the left arrow key, we are going to move the penguin. Now we have no reference of the penguin anywhere here, so we need to do that. So let's come back up here, add a penguin uh, class property. So that would be phaser.physics.matter.sprite, right? Because we're making a matter sprite. Just this, phaser.physics.matter.sprite. And we're going to set it to our penguin class property. OK, now we have a way to reference our penguin outside of just this create method. OK, so we do penguin, penguin, that's set velocity x and let's just say 10 uh, let's just put a speed up here going left minus speed else if this dot cursors dot right dot is down this dot penguin dot set velocity x now we're going to go uh, positive speed which is to the right when we have right press and if neither one of these is pressed, then dot set velocity x to be zero so that we stop moving. Let's see, oh, there we go. Yeah. Okay, so we don't want our penguin to like rotate like crazy here, right? Like, I mean, it's kind of cool. We don't really want that. Our character should not um, be rotating. It is fun, though. Um, so what we're going to do is go here, and I think we want sets uh, fixed rotation, which sets inertia to infinity, right? The body inertia in matter uh, matter JS, so that it'll stop our character from rotating. There we go. You, I mean, this is a this is a shortcut for us, which is great. Uh, there is also accessing the matter body directly and just calling set inertia. I think to do that, but this is easy built into phaser, so that's great. So now we're not using this walk animation, you see. So let's do that. So this dot penguin dot play. We want to do player walk and true. So this is. Ignore if playing. Now, if we don't pass this in, it'll basically only play the first frame every time because in each update tick, each update loop, left is still down, and we're going to try to go to that animation and play it again. That's why we want to do true. So if it is playing, don't play it again so that it'll just keep playing it on a loop correctly. So we want to do that. I'm going to do that. And then when we're not moving, we're going to go back to idle. Idle. So walk, that's great. And then we go back, we're still walking back, which is not as good. It's because we need to do our flip here. When we're going left, we also want to do this dot penguin dot flip x true. And then here flip x is false. And then if you're not pressing just whatever it was last. So that's good, that's good. Oh no. Let's move our penguin actually to uh, actually, or we can adjust our map here so it's not so crazy. Take our eraser and let's just erase. There. Okay, save. Export. Right. Okay, so now we need our camera to actually follow our penguin. So let's come over here. So this dot cameras dot main so our main camera start follow and let's just follow our penguin that's better look at him go it's not moving too fast i mean it is a nice world but i think that's still probably too fast how fast the penguins go all right, so we got left and right. So we're gonna do one more thing in this video and that's implement jump. 
with spacebar. So let's come down here. Now, first jump, we don't want it to be is down. You don't want to be jumping, you know, just because you have the uh, spacebar down. You only want it to jump when the key is first pressed. So let's do space just pressed. And we're going to do phaser.input.keyboard. So there is a just down helper here. Given a key, it'll tell you if it was just down or not. So this dot cursor is dot space. So if space just pressed, we're going to want this dot penguin dot set velocity y. Let's say 15 uh, minus 15. Yes. And that's it. Let's see what this does. That's a jump. Now you can jump in the air the way we have it right now, which is not what we want, but jump. I can move while we jump. OK. Now let's, uh, we can, you can adjust jump if that's too high. No, 12. Not bad. Okay, so let's just make sure that we can't actually um, jump if we're not touching something. So now in arcade physics, we can check down. And I don't think we can do that here. Let's just do a quick check, check here. Is the touching available? No. Um, so we need to just check that the penguin is actually touching something that is on the floor before down. Now we can do it simply here, just thinking, or we can do it the right way with a state machine. Let's just do it real quickly here just to get the concept of what's going on. In the next video, we're going to give you a state machine. Crash course here with the penguin. Um, so let's see. Let's just go. Is touching. Is touching ground. Let's say start as false. And let's go here. So this dot penguin dot on set on collide. Let's collide with. But right now, uh, just for simplicity, we can just do this. The only things we can collide with right now are actually uh, floors set on collide and so what happens here is we're going to get some data which is going to be a matter js i collision uh, collision uh, oh right right i need to just okay matter.js dot i collision pair is going to give us the two bodies that collided and so data dot body b should be the ground it doesn't really matter uh, for this very basic thing as long as we've collided on something we are touching ground right so this that is touching ground at least for now true Which is not always true. Now you can add some more math here, but know that it's touching an actual ground piece and not like, um, for example, touching a you know a, a side while you're sliding down or something. Uh, but we'll, for now, we'll leave this like this, and then we just basically have to go. And this dot is touching ground jump. Oops. So this theoretically, okay, let's come to the floor, more space. But still, all no, right, right. Is touching ground false? So when we jump, we're not touching ground, obviously. And then when we are, uh, when we when we hit the collide here, we are touching ground. So this should work, and this should not. Great, this should work. I am pressing space after I um, jump, and it's not working. Now this is not a perfect implementation. We'll go over that when we do a state machine for this character this penguin character we have a state machine video in a previous video a couple of weeks ago so if you want to skip ahead check a look at that video to see how you could uh, follow along and add it to your own penguin we'll go through the penguin state machine in 
the next video. So we have our jump, we have our walk in this video. We're gonna do one more thing before we, we uh, close up here. And that is specifying where the penguin should spawn. We have a tile map, so why not use it to tell us where the spawn point is? Let's go to our tile map here in tiled. Let's make a new layer. We're gonna call this, a, this is called an object layer. So select object layer in new layer over here. Let's just call this, let's just call this objects. And objects are different than tiles in that um, they're just gonna be JSON data just to give you information about what you wanna do at this location in the tile map. So let's go here. Now select our objects layer, select this rectangle, zoom in. Let's say we wanna spawn our penguin over here. Let's drag a square out here. Uh, let's just call it spawn, penguin spawn. You could also use type and name together um, for more complex interactions in your game. We're gonna keep it simple here. Penguin spawn, we save it. This area here is the penguin spawn. So now remember we gotta export. So in our game, we can reference these objects. So let's do it, let's do it here, ground. Dot. Um, oh no, let's, um, it's not on ground, it's on an objects layer. So map dot object, objects, get object layer. Now we call it objects, right? Just check it, yep. So we're gonna call this objects layer, wonderful. I like to do this at the end, so let's just do this at the end. This is the uh, getting the physics boxes in each of these, these uh, tiles here. So that's the objects layer. Actually, move this to after we have our penguin. Okay, so now we have our objects layer. So we do objects layer dot objects. These are all the objects in our objects layer. I just loop over them for each over each object. We'll have one right now, but you may you can add more, right? For other things you want to spawn. And this is object data. So we can just call this, just call this object data. So now what we have in this object data, object data, we have X, we have Y, we have a width, do we need that? Let's say no, let's just start simple, just X and Y, we wanna know where to put our penguin. And then this dot penguin, um, well, we have name. That's what we did, name. So we wanna call this, we wanna be a place where we spawn the penguin. So if there is no spawn point, we make no penguin actually. Let's do a switch here on the name. And for the case, which is penguin spawn, I think. Penguin spawn. We are going to spawn a penguin. So, interestingly, this should not be the exclamation mark because it could be undefined. If we don't have a spawn point on the map, there will be no penguin to spawn. Now let's just move our penguin creation into this switch case here. If we have a uh, object named penguin spawn. We're gonna spawn our penguin. See all these areas here, we'll fix that. So that's good. And the X, Y is instead of width and height here, it's gonna be X and Y. And we define it visually in tiled. Uh, this could be undefined, yes, but we know it's not undefined. Okay, now I guess what we could do is the, uh, yeah, okay, better. So, okay, let, let's just go with the typings. It's saying, it's telling us that it could be undefined. We know it's not gonna be undefined, but if it is, we're just gonna make it zero. That's what this says. So this will say, if if X doesn't exist in object data, make it zero, same for Y. So if we're giving some default values, 
in our object destructure out of the object data object here, which is the tile map tile maps dot tile object type. And let's move this. I can only follow the penguin if it exists. Let's move that in here as well. And great. Now these errors. So uh, let's for now, if not penguin, this not penguin. Don't do anything in update because all we're doing is moving the penguin. So that's good. All the errors are fixed. And of course, now we spawned right here. Now you see it's, let me just refresh. It's going to spawn where we said, which is this section of the world, which is over here. But we say we have it over here. But it's doing it over here. Now that's because the XY of our object here is up here in the top left. Um, there may be a way to set anchor here, which would be convenient. And if you do know it, let me know in the comments below. But we can always manually set it by simply getting the width here. Maybe we don't really need height because matter is going to, the physics engine takes care of that for us. What I want to do is uh, add half width of, let's also default that to zero. We don't need this so that we don't have shadowing. Variable name shadowing, meaning uh, in the outer scope of whatever you're in, there's another variable with the same name. That could get confusing sometimes. So we don't want, you generally don't want to do that. Sometimes you might. Uh, but anyway, we want to do is move our X, as you see here, half the width because our anchor is in the center. This red dot on the penguin is where our origin is. And so now we have it uh, right here on top of this first ice brick. And we have the penguin on top of this first ice brick. So now we can move, it's great can jump. It's pretty good. All right, so that's our character, pe our penguin character. We're using MatterJS physics here. We've got our world created and tiled. Um, we're setting a spawn point with objects in our object layer. And we also have this cheap fix for double jumping only if you're, uh, for jumping only if you're touching the ground so you don't get double jump or anything like that. Um, so come back for the next video. We are going to use a state machine to better encapsulate this penguin um, character player movement logic, including jump, so that we don't have this, you know, this quick and dirty way of, of uh, detecting if the if the penguin is on the ground or not before jumping. All right, so be sure to hit like if you enjoyed this video and follow for more videos on making a side-scrolling platformer in phase 3.50.